We'll say confirm. Now we now own this plot. What is up everybody? My name is Ushraf and today we got a highly, highly requested video. It's the plot land owning system. I'll figure out a better name for it later. But for now, let us commence forth. All right, so before we do any scripting or anything, let's go ahead and start by doing the setup. Now, I love to do the setup of everything just so we know, you know, so we can reference it when we're coding. So what you're going to do is you're going to find a nice area. Now, my frame rate is extremely low, but let's let's do some plots. All right, we're, we're going to call each land, uh, each block of land that we can buy a plot, right? So let's not focus on naming it right now. Um, let's just set the size and stuff. So I'm going to go down here. My frame rate is extremely low and we're going to go here, bada bing, bada boom, and just set a simple plot of land. And all right, now we have that. Now what you're going to want to do is just make sure it's anchored. I just like to anchor my stuff. Um, it doesn't really have an effect on the actual thing itself on the code, but just make sure it's anchored. It makes everything a lot easier. So we're going to call this plot one. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and duplicate this and then we're going to move it and we're going to do this right here. All right, boom. So we're going to be using four plots. Now for this system, it's highly adjustable, meaning you don't have to code it to each plot. Now, the way I wrote this script is it is unique to your game. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you can have two plots, three plots, six or nine plots, or even four or two or whatever. You can have any amount of plots and it will work. You don't need to modify anything. You just may have to uh, put certain things in that you would like, obviously, additionally. But for the sake of the example, we're going to be using plots of four. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and select all these and group them. Now, once you have done all these, the plot names don't really matter. I do highly recommend putting numbers after them, but it doesn't really matter. It's not going to really affect anything. Uh, so you can name it the same thing. But if you're doing houses, you can like name each house like its own thing, like in Real Citizens. This name right here, plots, is very important. That's what we're going to need. Then you're going to go to the replicated storage and you're going to insert a remote event. And for this remote event, we're going to go name this by property. All right. So we have our plots and we have our event. And all we're going to do is we're going to need a GUI. Let's go ahead and name this GUI something like plot GUI. And you can adjust this accordingly to the script. And then we'll insert one text label here in the middle. Sorry if you guys can hear the computer fans. And then we will insert insert a button all right and you guys can add a close button I'm just gonna put a yes button so what you guys can do is go ahead and like actually name um, this button confirm and then just name this title now you guys don't need to set the title because it's actually pretty cool in our script we're gonna be setting the title to our unique plot name which is pretty cool so let me go ahead and just adjust this GUI like so and we will go ahead and make the text scaled so you guys can see for the sake of the video. And then I just want to put this as green, you know, because the OCD is kind of kicking in. We'll set this background color to something like green. All right, this looks awesome. Now, what we'll do is we'll leave this GUI here. I'm thinking let's put this in the actual, in the replicated storage. Not the replicated first. Let's put this in the, you'll know you're doing everything right if it went away. Now, all we need to do is one simple script. It's just one script to make this entire thing. Go ahead and go to the server script service, and then we'll insert a script and we'll call this property handler. Awesome. We've got all this stuff down. Now this is all we need. The script, the GUI, the replicated storage with the event in it and the GUI obviously, and then the plots. And we only got about 32 lines of code. So if you're still watching this video, go ahead and pause, leave a comment. If you're signed in, I mean, it doesn't cost anything. I mean, I literally could just comment and be like, so Bushraf, I'm following the script because I'm actually wanting to learn. I'm not just taking the place. So if you are following the script, that's amazing. So I, if you do comment, I can be like, okay, now I can give even more in-depth tutorials on how to code because I don't want to just give you guys the place. And I'll be working on uh, doing like a membership uh, thing with the channel. So go and leave a comment and make a purchase at LimitlessGamer.net. That's my website. All right. 
Now what we'll do is, because we want to make it compatible for all computers, we will define a wait for child, not a find first child, and we'll let the game load in so we can get the plots. And then we'll name this by property. I remember in my live stream, somebody was asking me, um, why do you, and do you have to lowercase the first letter um, of your variable? And that's called lower camel case. It's highly recommended for most coding languages because that's how the computer can read it. Because I think it's really important to do that because that's how the, the computer likes it. But in Roblox, it doesn't really matter because it's for beginners. But when you code Unity and stuff, it's really important. All right, all that should have auto completed right there. So we got the first three lines down, skip two, and we'll say, or skip one, sorry, we'll say four IV in pairs. Now we've done a handful of these. So what this is doing is for I, uh, that's the count, and we'll say V. V is whatever we're parsing, right? So we're going to say, if you guys look at the Explorer here, we'll we'll see the plots, right? So we'll say plots because we already have them. And we'll say get children. Boom. And we'll get these. And while we're doing this, we'll say do because that's what we're doing. Because while we're getting them, we'll do the following. We'll say v.touched. So every time that the land is touched, we will be able to do that. Now, some features of this. If you guys are still watching the video, some features of this are it will be able to detect if somebody else owns the actual land. So nobody can have the same land twice, meaning if somebody owns it, like if I buy it, then another person can't come in. Oh, I want to buy this land, too. It's pretty cool the way it works. We'll add another if statement. We'll say hit dot parent find first child. And then we'll say humanoid. This is your generic hit statement. We've done this on the channel many, many times. That end should have came in. So at this point right now, you get about 13 lines of code with four ends. We're looking really nice right now. And then we'll say local PLR equals players. Honestly, I think this is one of the coolest things I've done. I've always wanted to do something like this. And the other day it just came to me and I was like, all right, let's do this. And it's really cool. The amount that you can expand on it is just incredible. All right, so why I just commented this and I put a wait. So why I commented this is here is we're gonna check to see if the player already owns it. Check to see if the player already owns it. So I didn't put this in. So I'll explain how you can do this. Just make another function and just check, okay, does the player own this already? Um, because with this system, a player can own multiple plots of land there's an easy fix or an easy way to just disable that and you could just add a check to see if they already do own it. <clears throat> All right, upon waiting 0.2 seconds, we'll say if not plr.playerGUI find first child plot GUI, then local UI equals game. So for me, you know, obviously I understand everything and I have to imagine that you guys don't. And so I'm trying to explain. So if basically if we don't have the GUI, if we don't have plot GUI, that's why the name's very important. Make sure these are matching. Then if the player doesn't have it, then let's go ahead and give it to him. And we'll say UI.title. This is why the grammar and spelling is very important uh, when you're putting in the title. Uh, there, I'll let you guys know if the names matter or not. And we'll say buy. And then this is why I told you guys, don't worry about what the title says because here's where we're naming it. So the title of our GUI, like what we're gonna present is we're gonna say buy and then v.name. This is the plot name. Oh, did I not change the colors? We shall change the colors so we can see what that is about. We'll say ui.parent equals plr.playerGUI. We'll say ui.confirm.mouseButton one click. So I just already messed that up. I'll say mouse button one click. Feel free to stop the video if you feel like I'm going too fast. And I'd appreciate some feedback in the comments, guys. We do have a placeable spike strip coming soon. Let's get this video up to like 50 likes and we'll see if we can hit that placeable likes spike strip, not like strip. Like this video for 10 years of good luck. I, I don't understand why the people do that. I mean, I guess it's cool. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is in each of these plots, when we change the colors, we need to insert uh, uh, string values. All right, awesome. This is the entire thing on how you can 
do it. So I'll go over it real quick. Basically, if the owner, if there's no owner, and if a player hits the part, and we'll check with the game to see if they're a player, we'll just wait so the game can catch up. And if they don't have the UI to buy it, then we'll go ahead and give it to them. And then we will go ahead and this is how you can buy it. We'll set the owner's name. So what we want to do now is we want to go to the plots and I'm just going to recolor them real quick. My thing is a little slow, so I'm just going to hurry up and rename. I hope everybody can see the difference of colors and this looks awesome. And what we need to do is insert a string value and we're going to name the string value owner. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy it and paste it into uh, each one. Um, multiple pasting is not allowed anymore. Or Last time I tried it, it didn't work. So now each of your plots... Now, you guys need to remember, your plots can be models too. If you have an entire house on here, which you, most, most of you guys will, that's fine. It's, it doesn't have to be a part. As long as it has owner on it, as long as it has this string value, right? So what we do is when we buy the house, we put owner and we assign the player's name. So, okay, that's fine, Rishraf, but what happens when the player leaves? Hmm, that's true. So I guess when the player leaves, we need to have a function that will cover when the player leaves. So we'll say function player, and then we'll, oops, auto end and then we'll say player leaves if you guys are having a good time on the channel go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button we'll say in pairs and then we'll say plots get children and then this is one of those do points i always forget the do but that's why i remind you guys owner dot value equals player dot name then v dot owner dot value equals and I forgot the extra the extra equivalent here. So basically, when a player leaves, if they are an owner, meaning if they are part ownership, meaning if any of the owners have the player's name, then go ahead and set that land owner to, to nothing, basically. And then this will be able to right here check, okay, well, that plot is now available. Now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and check this out. Now that we're loaded in, we have our handy output. Let's go and run up to the cyan plot and we'll jump on it. You don't have to jump on it. I just did it for dramatic effect. And we'll say plot two. Awesome. We'll say confirm. Now we now own this plot. Now, here's what I was saying earlier. I can go up to this plot and I can buy this too. Now, the problem with this is that's fine. There's actually no problem. Here's where you would want to put it. Now, what you can do is you can actually say, you can copy this. And you would actually put this here. I'll show you guys how to do it. For IV, blah, blah, blah. And you'd add your ends here. And you would say, um, if v.owner.playername, or you would use PLR here. If, then just return. Boom. That's, it's actually that simple. If they are having a... Actually, we can put that in right now. I have not tested this, though. But if they do own it, like if one of the plots is owned by them then we go and return. When you return in a script, basically no more. Like just stop executing the script. Let's actually try that out right now. And so you know I'm not fiddling with it. I'll go ahead and go to this yellow one. All right, we can buy it, confirm. And let's go and buy this blue one. And actually we do not get a, uh, a GUI here. So we're actually good to go. And we do own this yellow one. Now you guys can use this to your advantage and you guys can modify this and then you can send an event. So when they press, so what you would do is right here, uh, presses confirm in case you guys haven't figured that out. We just destroy our UI and then we set the owner value. Then you guys can put like a event or give a message to the player like congratulations on your purchase on anything like that. Now, if you guys are going to use this, go ahead. Just all I ask is please leave a like and thumbs up and a comment saying it works. Uncopy lock places in the description below. And if you guys are feeling generous, please make a purchase at Loaded Fitness or LimitlessGamer.net. And I want you guys to have a great rest of your day. Uh, happy whatever holiday is coming up. 
And if you guys have any business inquiries, contact at rishraf.com is the way to go. Peace.